Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our movie club. Today we will discuss a few episodes, actually two episodes of the Twilight Zone. Is it correct? Twilight? How would pronounce this? Yep, Twilight. Oh, Twilight. So yeah, do you know what does mean Twilight? <clears throat> Twilight. It's, I don't know how it, uh, it's translated correctly, but uh, in Russian it's a uh, zone without understanding. Uh, zone uh, uh, with uh, closed, uh -huh. closed zone. Uh, uncertainly, right? Something between dark and light, right? Something uncertain, yeah. something gray, a like gray zone. Yeah. Twilight Ooh. happens twice a day, dawn and dusk. Uh huh. Dawn and dusk, right? That's the twilight periods. It's all. It's not quite day. It's not quite night. The the change is happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, but they we use it in metaphorical sense, right? So yeah. something like not clearly understandable or something like uh, gray zone. Yeah. I, I use gray zone in my life uh, very often. My lawyers usually told me, you know, this not allowed, this not prohibited, this a gray zone. So something between. Yeah, we we call it gray area. Gray area, okay, gray area, <laughs> good. good. Same idea, yeah. It's not black and white, it's gray. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so I prepared a few kind of words about this Twilight Zone series. So it was for five years on American television, right? And it says it was groundbreaking. <laughs> so yeah, so it well. was kind of a thing, right, at, the, at that time. Uh, uh, recently, I read an article where it was mentioned like genre defined or something like. So it's defined a new genre of the television, right? So it was a very novel idea. Yeah, very mm -hmm. novel, fresh idea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, have you watched it uh, before? The Twilight Zone, something from it? Sergey, so, have you have you watched any episodes of Twilight Zone before? I I watched uh, one and a half episode. Uh, I watched uh, the Surf Man episode, and uh, I tried to find uh, the second episode. I can't. Uh, to uh, watch in Telegram, and uh, uh -huh. I started to watch other episode, but I understood that is other episode mm -hmm. okay. because yeah. uh, I found a lot of uh, a lot of seasons. Okay, but but I mean in general, have you heard about this series before? Have Not. you watched anything? No. Not. I, I actually don't remember if I watched it before, but it sounds really familiar. So I remember this kind of narration style. It's very kind of in a yeah. high genre, very yeah. Actually, this started that kind that narration style where they talk at the beginning. This story is about blah blah blah. That <laughs> that this started that. This was the first TV show to do that. So that's another thing that was groundbreaking. So yeah, when yeah. any when any show starts out like that, we think of the Twilight Zone right away. Oh, that's like the Twilight Zone, you know. And yeah. uh, every every old American knows the theme song, you know. Dee -doo, dee -doo, dee -doo, dee -doo. <laughs> we all know that song, uh, that that theme. It means something weird's going on, you know. Yeah. Uh, we watched we watched one episode before. Remember the man with the glass hand? Wasn't it Outer Limits? I don't remember. It was, was that Outer, outer Limits. I that, might, so. that might have been the outer limits. The outer limits came later, and it was the same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, prefer... get them, I get them mixed up sometimes. Yeah. You're Vassans, right. Vassans, please. Yeah, um, now I'm drawn to the Twilight Zone more than Star Trek, you know. And I, I, I envy the people who lived in those areas because if you look at Indian soap operas right now, you will hang yourself, you know, because if they are so. Um, uh, how to say that is ridiculous and so um not not near to reality you know you if you look at the indian soap yeah. opera but uh, even some of the most uh, contemporary television series are just uh, time passing you know uh, just yeah. uh, they have no exact content uh, value content but this episode just yeah. they had 30 minutes time span but they gave, they gave a heavy shot you mm. know like a, yeah. a short stories of uh, famous writers, just yep. a simple but yet powerful uh, story. Yeah. Yep. And you'll see a lot of famous movie stars in these episodes when they were young, before they were famous. William Shatner, Captain Kirk, was in a Twilight Zone episode. Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock, 
was in a Twilight Zone episode or, or Outer Limits. Mm-hmm. So you'll see a lot of young movie stars in these series because that's how they got started in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They had a small part in a Twilight Zone episode and they became famous, you know. Yeah. So in a, in a short paragraph that I prepared, so the, it's it's uh, it was told here that it's uh, famous for twist endings, moral lessons, and memorable catchphrases. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. mentioned that it's so provoking. So it's a good kind of uh, way, right? Good old times with uh, yeah. television yeah. not contained from actions, but from ideas, right? So it's interesting. Yeah. Submitted for your approval. I don't. Did we? Did we? We watched the the movie about the midnight club, right? Where they had to tell a story every at midnight. Did we watch that? I don't remember. Probably not. And when they every every they would meet at midnight and tell us a, a spooky story, and they had to start every story with this story is about. Okay, they, they had to start every story with. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Club. <laughs> this story is about blah, blah, blah. And they had to start every story with that. And that came from this show. Submitted for your approval this episode. <laughs> Vasant, please. And Vasant, there are very few participants today. So you can, you know, just chime in in our dialogue okay. whenever you want. Yeah, uh, Teacher Lee, uh, uh, tell me about the economic condition of the people who had television at that time, you know. Does everybody have the uh, privilege to watch these series? Because these concepts are so unique and only educated people can understand. So, uh, <laughs> when, okay. when, I, when I was a teenager, I was actually pretty poor. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I think at the time I was actually a, a, from a poor family. Um, pretty much everyone had a black and white TV. When TV came out, almost everyone got a black and white TV. So I would say that most households had one TV and we only had, you know, five or six channels, five or six channels. And there was so little programming that TV came on, let's say at eight in the morning and at 10 o'clock at night, it went off. There was no programming. It wasn't 24 hour a day programming. It was, you know, 12 hours a day, to watch something on TV, and that was it. Cartoons were only on Saturday morning from 8 to 12. You could watch cartoons four hours a week. It was very primitive. And then I remember one year, color TV came out. (laughs) And it was awesome. But not everybody could afford a color TV. I remember it it was pretty much the same, probably a few years, with a delay a few years in Russia. And I remember that um, we lived in a big building, so in apartments, and somewhere, how we call this, I don't know, when when a few apartments has an own entry, so how we call it, uh, this antenna. kind of... Okay. Antenna? Uh, it, it was not antenna, I mean that uh, when apartments organize it, they, they have own entry, so it's kind of a one kind of block oh. of building or something. Oh, and I remember God. that usually someone in the block had the TV. And it was normal to go there, you know, <laughs> to be a guest and to watch. Uh... <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it, it. Not in my time, but it's my in my, let's say, father time. It was so. Yeah. So they yeah. they went to be guests just to watch the TV. <laughs> had had to share, had a TV pool. <laughs> yeah, TV pool. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, cute. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and as as my uh, <laughs> paper say so it was uh, it's created it's inspired a few shows like the outer limits right mm-hmm, alfred mm-hmm. hitchcock and mm-hmm. so on yep i loved all yeah. those shows they were the only intellectual shows on tv and star yeah. trek good good so back in the old days it was great because there were only a few programs and the entire country watched the same programs so everyone in america knew the twilight zone Everyone in America knew the outer limits. We had a common, you know, a common experience in our lives. And it was great. You, oh, did you see the Twilight Zone episode about, oh yeah, that was great, man, blah, blah, blah. You know, and you could talk about things because everybody watched the same programs. Yeah, common yeah. context, right? So you can use yeah. Yeah. the phrase and everyone understand it, right? So it's great. 
now today series come and go and i never even hear of them you know <laughs> netflix disney plus amazon prime you know hulu you know yeah. stupid i've heard teacher that every minute every minute people upload on youtube videos uh, to watch it you you need uh, seven days so every every minute we create a seven days long video kind of shows and everything you know personal videos so it's just impossible to watch everything so there are no so so many time in our course <laughs> yeah yeah it's a shame <laughs> okay uh so let's talk first of all I, I had a good impression from the third minute of the show because of this narration style it's a kind of <laughs> it's something special so okay, have you noticed it that a narration I, style? Yeah. I didn't I, I didn't watch the first episode I watched uh, the second episode about the third man yes yeah yeah but I'm talking about the narration about the style you know when they started so I like yeah. I like the style of uh, of series and uh, I started to see other episodes and uh, it looks like uh, very modern uh, for me uh, not uh, not to think that it's a black white uh, black white movie mm -hmm. but it looks like good for me it's it's not obsolete right it still looks kind of uh, I don't know actual can I say Rele it? relevant yeah relevant. still relevant today yeah great great what else please I think the narration style helps to summarize the plot. They don't mm -hmm. have to introduce so much characters and uh, prelude, something like that. So, yeah. So. yeah. Movies today, you know, the movie starts and you don't know who anybody is. You don't know <laughs> what it's about. You don't know where it is. You know, so the narration kind of tells you this is a small town in anywhere USA. So and so is a barber, and he's going to work today. And it gives you a little bit of context, so you understand, you know, what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, Gerard. Gerard. Actually, well, we did not start to discuss the episode yet. We were just talking about the uh, show, Twilight episode, just just in general. But okay. you, you know, actually, I have a, I think I have a comment about um, this narration style, and I watched an interview with uh, some famous. Uh, Hollywood di director of the movies today and he said that it's a very poor style to have narration in the movie by modern standards because by modern standards you have to kind of show everything you have to kind of present it in a way that everyone understands everything so it's a modern standard when people put kind of any narration in the movie others you know frowns upon yeah. so it's kind of yeah the that's pace nonsense. is changed, I think. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's nonsense. Look at Star Wars. Yeah. How did Star Wars begin? It began with text scrolling <laughs> on the screen, telling you about the the mankind at that time in a galaxy far, far away. This is not the human race. This is another race, you know. And two great, you know, the rebel rebels and the empire, you know. And you have to explain the context so that people can under you know, appreciate it more. I think, and yeah. not having that to me is a mistake, you know. Okay, Sergey, please. Yes, and following your discussion, I tired about show in the movie too. <laughs> I like the uh, idea. I like the movie with a lot of dialogues, uh, uh, with uh, conflict. Uh, I can, I, I like, I can see movie without decoration, without show, uh, with one or two people like a movie platform uh, we yeah. uh, watched uh, one year ago. But I like the idea. Yeah. Once we watched a movie, Glenn Gary Rose, and it was uh, three yeah. people, three people talking. But it's still, I, I still remember this. So it was a table and people talking. That's all, you know. The whole movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a great movie. Yeah. Vasans, uh, please. Hmm. Vasans, Vasans, you are muted. Yeah. Uh... I, I, I just asked you because your hand was raised. That's all. Ah uh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go uh, to the um, series uh, episode itself. So episode was to serve man, right? <laughs> Pun included, right? As, as as we learn a little bit later. So I try to make some questions, but if they are not good, let's just skip them. So it's uh, not a problem. Uh, 
Gerard, have you watched the episode? Did you have a chance? Yes, yes, I did. So, can 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 you start, please? Okay. Some aliens come to Earth, very tall aliens, and they come communicate uh, telepathically, telepathically with a <coughs> with a brain. Uh -huh. Um, Gerard, may, may I ask, are you from mobile phone or something? Yes, I'm from a tablet. Uh -huh. can, can you see my screen? Because I'm sharing screen with questions. Uh, uh, if you cannot, I, I can just read it. It's not a problem. I, 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 got, I got lost. <laughs> it's, it's probably too small on the, on the Padlet, I guess. So let, let, let me read the first question. So the first is, how did the Kanamids, I don't know how to pronounce it, so it's a kind of aliens, right? Alien race who, who arrived. So how, how did the Kanamids initially gain the trust of the human in the episode? Or did they, did they gain the trust? I don't, I don't remember. Ah, okay, offering, offering, more food, you know, the way to cultivate more food, uh, the sources, everything, energy, mm -hmm. and everything. So mankind could thrive more. Yeah, but why Why they need, um, how, how, to, how to put this? Uh, so they, um, they made some kind of promises, right? Promises of the technology and goods and, and everything else. So, but what was the reason? What was the reason? Why they need this? The ulterior reason, I think they wanted the, the earth be their farm <laughs> to have <Yeah>. food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, they needed trust of the humans, right? To be, to be considered like good guys. Is it correct to say? <laughs> yes. For tourism, come visit our planet. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, Vova, could you please read question number two? When the cryptographer begins to decode the book to serve man, what, clue, what clues or events in the episode lead up to the eventual revelation or its true purpose? Yeah, revelation. Do you know what, what does mean, revelation? Uh, it's 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 related to the secret or you know something. So you have a secret when you kind of solve it, right? You have a re revelation. So you have a understanding what it was about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you remember what clues he had? He uh, he understood that uh, the first letters in the book were to self men and. He thought that it it was like to to like to eat. Yeah, but but do you understand the question? So what clues? So what does mean? So what kind of things he saw or noticed that you know made him think this way? Um, so when a detective, right? When a detective solving the case, right? He finds some kind of footprints or something and he start to suspect something right mm -hmm. was it in this episode something similar mm -hmm. uh, anyone can we can we answer this i remember well, there was some there was some moment kind of, <laughs> of revelation so it wasn't just you know just he, he was looking in the book and then understood So, so let me let me make something clear. Uh, it's been a while since I saw this episode, mm -hmm. but uh, this, they found this. They got this book, this alien book, mm -hmm. uh, and they tried. To, they couldn't translate it because they didn't know the language. But they were able eventually to translate the title, and the title of this book was "To Serve Man." <laughs> and the aliens were trying to help mankind by saying, "We'll share." medical technology with you and advanced technology you know we're here to help you so we thought this book was their guidebook for how they're going to help advance the human race and slowly through the series they translate little pieces of the book <laughs> uh 
<laughs> and they're trying to figure out what this book is saying and they don't know yet and and the aliens are trying to get people to come on their spaceship and go visit their planet kind of like a tour a tour uh, uh, an ocean cruise in space you know come visit our planet we'll show you around blah 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 uh, <laughs> so this one guy looks at the book and and i guess they they translate a few pieces of it and they it doesn't sound like what they think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was a twist. But do you remember that uh, episode started not not on the yours? It was started in a, I don't know what's the name for it, jail or some kind of isolated room? On the spaceship. I think he was on their spaceship going to their planet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, do you remember the spaceship and mm -hmm. the man inside? So what do we think at that moment? What 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 do you what did you think at that moment? What what is happening on? I thought I, I saw that the man uh, in the spaceship. I don't know why, but uh, it looks like a spaceship room. And uh, I uh, started to understand that uh, we have the, uh, maybe intellect, uh, intellect uh, artificial intellect who connected uh, with a man who commanded it, him and uh, who. Uh, advised him not smoke, not uh, through the uh, cigarette, uh, not the uh, mm -hmm. garbage box. But, uh, please, uh, please uh, stand up. Uh, and we don't want. And I remember that moment. Uh, we don't want that you uh, lose uh, the fat. Uh, please uh, <laughs> eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah. for for the uh, mood of this man, I understood that. Uh, <laughs> He didn't. Uh, he didn't happy about it, and he uh, didn't want to be there. So, so it starts out. He's a passenger on a spaceship, and then it flashes back to the beginning when the aliens first arrive on the Earth. And at the end, we see how he ended up on that spaceship at the beginning. <laughs> a, a cool technique. A cool. Yeah. Cool technique, yeah. Yeah, Vasant, how would you would you describe this, you know, uh, spaceship? So was it kind of like a, I don't know, enjoyment or to be here? Mm -hmm. No, uh, they didn't show much of the spaceship after that. After he boarded the flight, you know, they showed it just a single room for everybody, <laughs> just like a can. Uh, Confined cell, is that right? A solitude cell, mm -hmm. like that, yeah. So yeah. just they have a hole to uh, serve you a food, that's it. Yeah, so actually almost a final house, right? <laughs> <laughs> almost prison-like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah funny. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the silly question I have. So what methods? I think we actually already mentioned, but let's answer again. So what methods did the economists use to capture human, to capture human for their own purpose? So what was the method? Was it kind of a, a brute force or what it was? It was an advertisement. Uh, advertisement. Uh, <laughs> please, if you, if, you have, uh, if you want to have a free, uh, free, uh, some I don't know TV, other things. Please uh, went to our planet, and you can uh, you will be able to see uh, some uh, resorts and uh, a lot of interesting things. Please go, and a lot of people uh, <laughs> went because uh, uh, <clears throat> during this uh, movie we uh, remember that we can see uh, some uh, place where uh, organization of United Nations uh, yeah. OUN. Uh, have the uh, meeting about the food uh, problems. Uh, this time, uh, world had uh, food problems and uh, aliens promote uh, that the, you, if you want to, uh, if you go to us, uh, you don't have the uh, food problems. And they uh, show that uh, they can to uh, solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh... If you were, were invited to this trip, Sergey, would you go? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not, because it looks like very, very strange for me. <laughs> well, but what, 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 what was the kind of arguments against? 
So why not? So it's a new planet, you know. It's because, a yes. I I I if I uh, have live in this time, I want to have the feedback from uh, people who returned uh, from this planet. But uh, I don't. I didn't see that. <laughs> so can I can I say, teacher, that Sergey did not uh, do, does not want to be a pioneer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's so, who, would you yeah. go to such a trip if you were in this given circumstances, you know, with uh, all this advertisement? advertisement? Mm, uh, no, alone, yeah, I, I would not prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are, well, what's the word for this? Cautious, right? Cautious people? Cautious, cautious yeah, cautious. <laughs> cautious yeah, yeah, cautious. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Where are the customer reviews? Let me read some customer reviews. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm in. I'm on the planet, and I'm having a great time. The food here is delicious. Wow, you guys should come. I wish you were here. And you never hear from the guy again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. In Russia, we have uh, some short, not short, sorry, pogovorka sayings or proverb. Yeah, and uh, free cheese in the uh, mouse trap, and uh, it looks like a, a mouse. Yeah, so, so uh, free cheese, right? It's always a trap for a mouse. What we say. So, yeah. if you yeah. see free, che free <laughs> cheese, you know that you know <laughs> you are the one who is a game, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You win. We, you win one million dollars. Please uh, send me one thousand. I say this is one million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, what else, please? Yeah, I thought it would be funnier if you ask the aliens, what's for the dinner? Then they would say, you are the dinner. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah interesting. Okay, yeah. let's talk a little bit about cryptography, if you can. Uh, so, Gerard, there is a question that uh, it uh, sounds like, discuss the role of the of the cryptographer in this episode how does her character but it's his character right? it was his how does his character contribute to the plot hmm? but i think it was a woman or a man i don't remember i think it was a man I think. at the end okay. it was a it was a woman at the end that said don't get on the ship <laughs> remember that that was a woman yeah. that said that yeah, yeah exactly but I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if she was a cryptographer. Yeah, I'm not sure. She might have been the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking the, is there some inconsistency with the title, you know, to serve a man, you know, in English, sir, have several meanings. What's yeah. the likelihood that in alien language you have this problem, you know? The same word <clears> will have uh, the several meanings that has an English. It's very impossible. Besides, if someone was able to translate the word, the person who translate the word should know the, the, the real meaning of the word. Yeah. So this, this confusion doesn't have any sense, you know, to, to do very different languages. Yeah, John, correct me if, if, I, if, if, I, if, I, if I understood you correct. So uh, because there is a kind of a double meaning in English, it does not mean that this double meaning should be in alien language, right? Yes. <laughs> for instance, uh, yeah. <laughs> for instance in, 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 if the person was able to translate the real meaning, the, the person should have, you know, have this conflict, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. Because... Like another, another, another reflection. What's the likelihood that the uh, superior race serves an inferior race? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the idea is like, why are you doing this? Why are you helping us? You know, that's the question I would be asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but do you remember they asked this question, and the answer was, you know, to to help you. So it's our mission, some kind of. <laughs> it's our religion. We have to help others. <laughs> but, but the word "self," you know, implies you know that I, I'm a person is down, you know. An inferior person serves a superior person, but you know, one thing is serving, and another thing is helping. Uh, <clears throat> Teacher, do you use the word serve like for for for, for any job? Let's can I say that I serve to my company or it's 
it looks strange. You can. We normally use serve in two contexts. You serve in the military as a soldier. Mm -hmm. And in a restaurant, the servers wait on the people or serve the customers. You serve mm -hmm. food to the customers. So waiters and waitresses, we call servers. Mm -hmm. They serve their customers. Well, so it yeah. usually has a good meaning. But it, they serve your food to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny enough, but in Russian, we say if to serve in army as well, so we're in navy or some military or police, for instance, and also we used to serve in the theater. So our actress and actresses they don't work; they serve. <laughs> we say, That's don't weird. know why. Yeah. Okay, That's weird. We yeah. we don't use it that way. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what else? Uh, teacher Lee, don't be safe. Uh, service after we retire, we mentioned their work as a service. Don't we say that? When a person got retired in, in his 60s, and we, we would say he is retired from his service or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you yeah, when you get out of the military, you can say, I served my country. That means you were in the military. Yeah, not any other job. Okay, we don't normally use it for other jobs, only for the military. Oh. Oh. So serve when you serve your country, uh, that kind of has a lofty, noble meaning. You you risk your life for your country, so you served by risking your life. So it has a a, a nice noble meaning to it. I served my country. So that's the only time we use that for, for that kind of service. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Sergey, please. You want to talk yeah. And I have a question about cryptography. Uh, can we use uh, the artificial intelligence for this is their uh, old language, old uh, cryptograph codes uh, from like a, a, a German uh, during World War II? It's uh, it, it yeah, I understand what you're talking about. So, mm -hmm. so uh, it's true that we have a very uh, uh, promising progress in artificial intelligence just now. It's, it's very true. So we can see a lot of new usages that we haven't seen before. But in the in a case of cryptography, in a case of decoding something, it's still on the very early stage. So it's not a it's not a task in the focus of uh, people, so that's why there is no progress yet. What? Okay, what's the focus of people? But if if I see in te Telegram, it's a bad focus. Please, uh, uh, please uh, paint the cats uh, with a with the mask. It's a it, it's a focus. Is it a no, focus? When I when I say focus, I think that uh, it's. Uh, uh, the main kind of task on what corporations like Google or Facebook or something on what they are working now. And most of them now working on two types of models, artificial intelligent models. First of them is a text language processing. So what we see, chat GPT and all these things. And second focus is on uh, generating uh, network. So when you can produce an image from the prompt, from text description. So it's a two two main, let's say, focuses or ways on what we focus it now. So because Sergey, you know, decryption. Okay, let me let me try to answer very short. You know, artificial intelligence. It's uh, anecdotically enough, but artificial intelligence is good uh, um, at at things that don't need to be calculated exactly at this moment. So in, in, in this moment, artificial intelligence is pretty random things. It's, it can generate text or something, but it cannot solve an equation yet because it's kind of, we are stuck at this. So and yes. decryptions, <laughs> decryptions, it needs to be, you know, very uh, accurately calculated. So that's why we don't have good models for this. Okay. At this moment. <laughs> but we will have, you know, in 10 years, be sure that we will have all the old languages, you know, de de decrypted. 
but these episodes were very old. AI was not even imaginable <laughs> back then. Computers, computers hadn't even been invented yet. You know, this, this was yeah. pre-computer days. So, yeah. you know, black and white TV days. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's up? So talking about this episode, could you please summarize it? Summarize this plan or idea and you know in a few words. The first one or the second one? Yes, first one. First one. The to serve men. Okay. Um about uh, so the to serve a man was just a good book, so they uh, are not they were not uh preparing food to serve the human. They wanted to serve human to themselves as a food. <laughs> so they were fake friends, right? Yeah, they didn't. Uh, so it's the moral of the story. So just read the complete book, not just the title or you know, the first chapter. In the end, it said it's a, it was a cookbook. The lady said that. So <laughs> it, they didn't uh, read that book completely. Yeah, it was it was funny, but I I I I don't think kind of a strong moral here or something. You know, we can learn from this. I think this is just a you know screenplay of a nice <laughs> pun. So, do you agree? Beware <laughs> of Greeks bearing <laughs> gifts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Bible, right, or somewhere else. Uh, it's mythology. Yeah, yeah. Mythology. <laughs> yeah, Troy, the city of Troy. Uh -huh. The Trojan yeah. horse, right? The Trojan <laughs> horse. Uh, Sergey, please. Yeah, I remember the moment when the uh, one diplomat, uh, I think from Soviet Union, maybe, uh, <laughs> who wanted to go to the uh, ships. <laughs> yes, I have the diplomatic permit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the funny thing was that they, they, I think they estimated their weights before they aboard the ship, spaceship, I think. Yeah. There was a yeah. device, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They funny. measure everyone, right? To understand. Yeah. <laughs> like His face was glowing <laughs> when like he an, saw someone <laughs> very fat. <laughs> like an amusement ride. You have to weigh yeah. so much to get on the ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny one. So at the end of the movie, we see how at the beginning of the movie, he got on the spaceship. Yes. <laughs> and now we understand why he's not happy. <laughs> and why he refused to eat, right? He wants to, be... <laughs> want to be a bad, I don't know, bad breakfast. Right? <laughs> yeah. He wants to get skinny and unappetizing so they won't eat him. Yeah. And not just a bit, uh you know, beginning. The ending is also a groundbreaking because he is looking at the audience and talking to them. You, know? you might be the one. Something <laughs> like that. So that, that was really... <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know wednesday did that once in a while sometimes the actor talks right to the audience i know the suspense is killing you you know <laughs> it's a nice technique yeah okay okay good guys have you, did you have a chance to watch a second one so i know sergey didn't have a final what sounds have you i watched the complete one Okay, good. So we can discuss as well, but we can do it faster, I think, because it's, it's much simpler, right? So it's uh, not not too much to, to discuss. Uh, Gerard, would you like to answer the first one? So protagonist Henry Bemis. So what we can tell about him and his interests? This guy was interested really in anything. Mm -hmm. But the problem is he couldn't do that at home because... His wife wouldn't allow him to do that. And then he, I think he was a bank clerk. Uh, he did that while working, uh, you know. So, you know, his boss wasn't happy with that. <laughs> Logically. <laughs> and he had to follow up with uh, his eyesight. It's called myopi, I think. I don't know. My, very, myopia, very, yeah, myopia. myopia, yeah, myopia. Very, you know, the the glasses look like a magnifier glass, you know, like a <laughs> telescope, right? Telescope, yeah. 
But the man was a bit, a little bit annoying, you know. He was obsessed with reading in a way and think and think about nowadays. <laughs> Uh, but but I think people read their phones now in the same way, right? So more, <laughs> some people so much deep inside their phones that you cannot, you know, make a conversation with them. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> uh, can we say that this guy was kind of a weirdo or something? So some kind of. Yeah, he was a weirdo. <laughs> okay. All he talks about is books, books, books. Did you read the book about blah, 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 blah? Oh, it talks about blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, he just won't shut up, you know. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> well, could you please read the second question and answer it? First part. How does Henry relationships with his wife and his colleagues reflect mm -hmm. his struggle to balance his love for reading with the demands of everyday life. Do you understand the question? Mm -hmm. uh, um, he uh, prefer reading. Uh, um, he, he doesn't talk with uh, uh, his wife and his colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, and they are angry at him. They were angry at him, right? And he tried to, uh, to what? To deceive them, right? To, <laughs> to hide somewhere, to read, you know, without their attention, right? So, because he always wanted to spend time, his time in this way, not the way the society asked them, right? So I, I would not play poker with my friends. I go to some, you know, basement and I will read book, book here. Right? Nice. Vasans, could you please answer number three? The events that lead him to being sole survivor of the apocalypse. Yeah, um, he wanted to read it uh, because he was scolded by his uh, the president of the bank, and uh, so and he had a bad relationship with this in his home too because his wife didn't want him to reading all the time. She mm -hmm. stole some of his books. So, um, he wanted some alone, uh, some alone time. So, uh, he found the lunch timing for the better one. Uh, he left uh, his desk at 12 o'clock and went into the vault, uh, that secret vault that is used to keep all the customers' money and uh, belongings. Yeah. He just uh, went there and uh, started to read a local newspaper, I think, and uh, some books. But unfortunately, there was a nuclear explosion, uh, and, and uh, everybody, everything else was destroyed except the, that vault. When he came out of the vault, uh, he saw that everything, uh, just debris and nothing alive, out of debris only. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, because he was in this kind of safe place, right? He was, he became to be the only survivor of this <laughs> continent, let's say at least, right? And I remember that he found some kind of food. It was canned food in some shop or something, and he said it's enough for my lifetime. So it was <laughs> kind of to to understand that he's in safe, like from food point of view, but he has no. Um, nothing to do, right, in this world. So what to do in this world? He was uh, not needed for this world. And then he found the library, right? Library with many <laughs> books. And this <laughs> this time we, we come back to the, again, to the title, right? Time enough <laughs> at last. So <laughs> thanks God, you know, I was a miserable man, but oh. now I have everything I need to. I have all the time of my life and I have all the books <laughs> or, or, or that I need. <laughs> Sergey, would you like to answer the... Ah, okay. Sergey, you know, so do, do you understand what is happening well, from what we discussed? No, not, not, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, but, you know, after he found his all these books and everything, he broke his glasses, right? Accidentally. <laughs> and I like this moment because 
he kind of went the whole way from be totally happy to totally unhappy like two times in one minute. <laughs> so I was miserable. Now I'm a king of situation. And now I'm again a miserable and uh, <laughs> and have no purpose in my life. So that's, that's I found kind of interesting. It's kind of like when you're on the ocean and you're dying of thirst. We say water, water everywhere and not a drop. To drink. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. So again, a pun kind of related to the title, right? And uh, time enough. And it started, I, I really, I started to think about it. You know, it's uh, not a um, kind of fiction scenario, uh, almost. So we have many people who, you know, serve their whole life, work their whole life to be rich, and then they found kind of disease or something, right? And they don't need this money anymore. I I take them away, you know, I need my health back. So it's kind of a story of the life. <laughs> Masas, please. Yeah, I don't understand his perspective because reading book is about gaining knowledge and knowledge is only useful when you share it to somebody else. No? Just reading books won't make you happy, right? In my perspective. Uh, it won't make you happier. But you at some look... point, you will feel bored, you know. Yeah, but but you can look at this like <clears throat> on on uh, <clears throat> like on. It it wasn't for knowledge. It was for enjoyment mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. it was mm -hmm. a way how he entertained himself with these books. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the the fiction world. Part. Yeah, it was fiction. Do you remember he was talking mm. to a lady in a bank yeah. and he talked about some fiction story? Yes, and uh, yeah, when he found the library, he mentioned that Shakespeare and Shelley and everything. So all the fictional writers, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he hates real life. By reading, his mind transports into an imaginary world where he can enjoy himself. So it's kind of like a VR environment. He would rather live in a VR environment than have to go outside and deal with real life. <laughs> and I can easily understand this, easily relate to this. When I was young, we did not have computers and books were my universe, you know? So I could sit in basement and read a book about some adventures in America, you know? And I was here, you know? I was Indian yeah. chief <laughs> and I was a <laughs> golf boy and everything I wanted to. <laughs> Do you remember in Matrix, the bad guy, I forgot his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad guy said, I want to go back inside the Matrix. I want to go back in there and be comfortable and be rich and eat steak and drink wine all the time. Reality sucks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I think we covered this one, right? So it, it, it was pretty I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. So I enjoyed the, this uh, twist at the end, you know, when bro yeah. broken glasses changed everything in one second. So it's yeah. it yeah. kind of so provoking. Yeah. Gerard, please. Yeah. Do you remember the, what his wife did to him, you know, with the poetry book? Yeah, she was cruel, right, to him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, my, yeah. My my son was like that. He would buy books when he was younger. He'd buy books, and I couldn't even dog ear a page. I couldn't bend a page. He, Daddy, don't don't ruin the book, Daddy. We we'll just highlight important. Oh no, I don't want to highlight in the book. He would. He didn't want to bend the page or damage a book in any way when he was younger. Yeah, <laughs> understandable. <laughs> okay, let's do some slides, maybe. Uh, Sergey, would you please start? Yeah, uh, it's the first moment of this uh, third man uh, when we can see uh, the main character in the spaceship, in the small room, and we we have a uh, poor uh, interior, and uh, he had uh, one mirror, uh, one room, uh, one uh, one window, uh, one door, and uh, the uh, room uh, for not room for small window for uh, uh, delivery the food. I don't and, know. Uh, and light. Yeah. How we call this, you know, this uh, uh, whole 
<laughs> you know, to take food from in the jail. So just feeding the hole. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd probably call it a slot. The slot's something you usually put something through, like oh, a okay. card slot. So we'd probably call it a, a food slot. Yeah. Food slot. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, so no, not even a window, right? Just uh, not even an illuminator, nothing. Just a small room. And this okay. metal, metal wall, how we call it, uh, perforated, right? It should be small. Yeah, if we actually have a material like that called pegboard, it's for like tools. Mm -hmm. You can put you can put hooks. It's got holes in it, and you put hooks in it, and you can hang tools on it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we call that peg board because you put metal pegs in it and you can hang things on it. So that's what it looks like to me is peg board. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So there's, there's a better look for this. And <laughs> ah, the old days, no, yeah. not, not crowded, no rush hour. <laughs> Vova, could you please describe this picture? Mm, yes. Uh, it is, <clears throat> it is old place mm -hmm. somewhere in america let's say mm -hmm. uh, not many cars mm -hmm. not crowded mm -hmm. okay read some advertisement if you can't if you can pepsi cola pepsi cola right on the right <laughs> <laughs> uh rapper something i don't know I don't know what that is. Ruppet? That, that doesn't make it. Oh, puppet. Maybe puppet. A puppet? Yeah, could be. Okay. Uh, so people uh, crossing the road, right? Mm -hmm. What else? What is in the center? Some kind of boxes. It's a trash bins, probably. Yes. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Looks strange. Mm -hmm. Are they the advertisement boards? Uh, he calls. How did he call that? The name boards, uh, advertisement posters. I've, I've never seen that before in the middle of the road. Yeah, the, yeah, a lot of lot of billboards for advertising. Ah, very cool. Billboard. The the AAA. There's an oval with AAA. That's still in business today. They still exist. That's the Automobile Association of America. <laughs> nice. And you join them, and if your car breaks down. You just call their phone number and they'll send a tow truck out and tow your car back for you as a free service. So we still have that organization today. <laughs> Good, yeah. Well, and um, looks I like see an, old, an old taxi on the left, looks like. Yeah. On the, left, le taxi. the left, le left corner looks like a taxi. It's mm -hmm. kind of gray and white car. Yep. Looks like a taxi, people crossing the street, a bus. Yeah. Okay, what town? Is it Washington? I can't tell. Yeah. Okay, can't let's tell. go further. So another way, like walkway. This is the same, but people walking on the street. And now I can create liquors. Yeah, liquor store. <laughs> uh, sun, gold, something. Windsor, cafeteria. Uh, Windsor, yeah, Windsor. Gold well, is either a pawn shop or a jewelry store. Yeah, people people are well dressed, right? Most of them, and yeah. there are a few trucks. So mostly the cars is trucks. Yeah, pretty nice. Looks like florist. Yep, I saw a florist sign. What's up? Could you please describe this one? Yeah, this is. The place of higher officials of the United um, USA, I think, so that the man is talking to the television through television, mm -hmm. the live telecast, and he was telling that um, there was a spaceship arrived on Earth, and um, those aliens landed on Earth. Something like that. It's about telling the people not to worry and they are making arrangements to talk to them mm -hmm. to the alien thing like that and also they were planning to associate and you know, to gather all the other countries mm -hmm. you know, powerful countries in this mission you can see a different set of old uh, camera 
is very huge. He's recording the event. Have you noticed the size of the camera? Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one, boy. <laughs> yeah. You know, sounds it's interesting, but uh, as far as I remember, first this camera, uh, this cameras will we were able to send on air picture. So uh, recording was a kind of a second iteration. So the first, all the cameras was kind of on air, you know, live. Uh, mm -hmm television so and only later we found a way to to record you know the video it's interesting so probably it's a live camera or i don't know how we call them a live broadcast yeah yeah live broadcast yeah, yeah. this uh, united nation cabinet looks very simple right <laughs> yeah very yeah. cheap yeah very utilitarian yeah exactly very spartan there's okay. the alien yeah talking about aliens gerard could you please describe this one the, the guy is very tall and he's having the wood mm -hmm. uh, i think is that is that the united nations or the america yep i'm not okay. sure because we have even a, a representative of the soviet union friends <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So the the alien is uh, offering the help of the aliens, you know, to to thrive for humankind to thrive. I also thought while watching that that many businesses would fall down. You know, the economy would affect. You know, the aliens doing that would affect the 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 world economy because mm -hmm. energy. You know, uh, many things would be affected. People that are working in some fields, you know, they, what they would do. <clears throat> I think the impact would be very, very strong. It's not good for everybody. John, can you see these people on the on the kind of top with the headsets? There are four people. You know who they are? Uh, you know, describing what is going in many different countries, you know, in several languages, I guess. Mm -hmm. How we call is that a live commentary? Yeah. In interpreters or translators yeah, yeah. perhaps so, so they translate in real life right so we call it synchronous or something synchronous translation yeah, yeah. like the sign uh -huh. like the sign language people today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, can we say that uh, the place is a gallery or something yeah a high location yeah, sometimes called a gallery or a balcony a, a gallery yeah We'd call it an observation room, mm -hmm. but you can call it a gallery viewing room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sergey, could you please help us with this? Uh, it looks like a, a radio radio room or a transla uh, translation from the uh, United... Uh, United yeah. uh, from this... Uh, Cabinets and uh, they uh, they put some information and uh, the radio uh, man who sit who sits uh, on the uh, on behind this uh, main character uh, sends this information around the world and mm -hmm. uh, three boxes looks like a radio system. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's a crypto kind of room. So the, the guy in the center is a cryptographer, and this ah, military yeah. guys they brought him a book, you know, to decipher. To decipher. Yeah. Deciphering the book. Deciphering the book, yeah. And this uh, machinery behind them looks like a personal computers in a way. <laughs> Very primitive. Yeah, a little three meters yeah. and a reel to reel recorder. <laughs> okay. okay, let's see some yeah. pictures from the second episode. You know, this. Uh... <laughs> How will you describe him? He's very weird. Yeah, why? <laughs> He's standing in a strange pose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he is he has strange um, glasses. Glasses. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. Where he is? What is what is what room is? Uh, like the main. His boss, right? His boss, yes. Can you see these two pipes on the table? Do you know what is this? 
Foi internet. Foi internet. Não é simples. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. Now those are ink oh. pens. Those are ink <laughs> pens. They sit in a little a little ink a pen holder. Yeah. Well, it's like this. So it's a it's a pen. It's a pen. You put it in the it's with the ink, but it it's looks like a rotor yeah. yes. with antennas, but it's not that time. <laughs> 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 Okay, what's up? Say yourselves. Yeah, I like this moment when he told his boss about his wife. Then the boss said, Yeah, I know, you know what? Your wife is the wiser woman. <laughs> you know <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, guys, I, I, I noticed that his uh, lower button on his uh, jacket is open. Can you see this? I know that in, in my culture, it's demanded by, you know, etiquette. So the lower button never should be uh, closed, right? We say. <laughs> That's correct. I, I think really it's because old men have big bellies and it's more comfortable <laughs> to unbutton it. So executives unbutton the lower button. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know about this? No. So, you know, it's a formal suit, kind of, right? He he's, looks weird, but it's kind of formal. And when you wear a formal suit, you cannot button your the lower button. It, all, it must be open. Mm -hmm. Why? Without reason, by etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here he found another book to read. Uh, let's talk about this one. Uh, <laughs> what sounds could you please? Yeah, uh, when he was about to leave, his wife found a book in his pocket and asked, what is this? And then, oh, I must have got it. Uh, uh, I don't know where, how it came uh, here, yeah, something like that. But she was so, she turned so quickly, you know, uh, so nice and asked him about reading that book aloud for her. Then uh, he was surprised and he uh, been also happy that he had a chance to explain his wife about the uh, book and everything. So he mm -hmm. started to read that book, but found that it was all scribbled. You know. uh, she just uh, crossed uh, everything, uh, every pages. Uh, so he couldn't read that. Then mm -hmm. uh, he was, uh, he asked her about that. Then she was, uh, got curious and Every page is into pieces. <laughs> yeah. And the sink on the right, what do you think is it is the box on the right? What? Can you see this kind of a furniture? What 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 it is the box on the right? I think it's a fridge. Oh, I, I think a fridge, yeah. <laughs> Very small. I've never seen one that small before. <laughs> Man, that tiny. Yeah, funny. <laughs> The small door is the freezer. It looks like all you can put in there is ice cubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Gerard, could you please describe this one? Okay. So the man, Mr. Williams, survived the, the H bomb, <laughs> the hydrogen bomb, atomic bomb. But I think yeah. the atomic bomb. Hydrogen, I think there is radiation after the explosion. There, there would be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the newspaper said that it's a hydrogen bomb, you know, H bomb. So he was reading in that world, it said it's a H bomb. Mm -hmm. So the man found some cans of food, a candle, and also in another moment, a, a gun, a revolver. I think it will it will be useful for him for him at the end, you know. <laughs> with, his eyes, with his eyes had problem. The problem is not he cannot, not can, cannot read, he cannot see. That's the main problem. Because oh. he is you no, know, his eyesight is so horrible. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and I was afraid all the time about you know about his eyesight and his glasses. Like this guy will lose his glasses. <laughs> the most important thing was his glasses, so he yeah. should have care more about his glasses. Yeah. yeah. You know, you put a rope 
in your glasses or if they fall down, at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You know, I I, have, I wear glasses, and that's why when I travel, I always have a second pair in my <laughs> second pair in my kind of uh, case or somewhere because. Yeah. But I can see without glasses, not like this guy, and still. <laughs> Man, <laughs> terrible. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. Jared, if you if you had a can with uh, food like he has, right, and you don't have a knife, would you uh, could you be open? Could you be able to open it? I think I think uh, in the middle of the road you can find something to open in the can. You think. It's not that. <laughs> yeah. you, if there are cans, there must be something that can open the cans. <laughs> yeah, I remember I actually asked this in, in the our t- Telegram chat, and I was it was interesting for me because Sergey, can you open a can? Uh, with food, you know, this kind of food without a knife, without a key, without anything. Can you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the reason yeah. I'm laughing because I don't know why, but it was in our school education. So I can open can with, you know, bare hand like in 20 different times, you know, with a stone, oh. with a nickel, with anything. <laughs> we, we can't, we don't, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it was a preparation to nuclear war or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys were more worried about nuclear war than we were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in, I, in the, I can open it yeah. in, in the middle of nowhere. In the army, in the military, they have a little small blade yeah. that can open a can i'm not sure how it works but you know <laughs> the army has a tool to open cans <laughs> I understand yeah okay so this guy found his fortune right he's all these books the library so i wonder how this book survived but okay they survived <laughs> <laughs> and the last one sergey what could you see here uh, it's, a... it's a pile of books. Can you see? He sorted everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why. Maybe he uh, sorted some books for genres, for um, authors. <laughs> and, uh, exactly. Uh, there are there are a lot of uh, other books. Uh, there is a, a switch uh, a watch. Yeah, a clock here. Yeah. There is a clock from the library, maybe, mm-hmm. and. Uh, some other devices. I don't know what is the uh, left side, and uh, maybe it's. A, uh, I think head. it's a bookshelf or something. Yeah. Probably. I I, see, I I beam. I can't tell. Yeah. I don't know why. What is it? <laughs> so he sorted all the books into this the slots on this stock piles. By priority, you know, first I will read this, then I will read this. So all sorted, all prepared, and and then he broke his glasses, you know. So no more books for me. <laughs> Poor guy. And this clock on the behind um, in front of him, I think it's a symbol, right? So <laughs> little irony. I got books, I got time. I have everything. everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so and this I time try. it's a big clock, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and time, pages. yeah, <laughs> and it's broke, but it doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Poor boy, poor boy. Yeah, and uh, you know this. This is how we are fragile, right? So this much is enough to destroy us. <laughs> 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 yeah nice one yeah. okay so i don't know how about you but, but i enjoyed this uh conversation and this uh, yeah. series it was yeah. interesting enough i think we will take a few sergey so if you are watch if you are watching twilight episodes you know take a note you know what you liked and probably we will watch uh later on if we have some mm. good one if you search the, the internet one. Okay. Yeah. If you if you search the internet, you know you can find you know the top ten episodes of the Twilight Zone. You can get people's yeah. opinions of which ones were the best episodes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, answer, I, 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 yes, I read that the second episode was the most loved one in the entire series. You know, uh, on the internet, I read about that. This one got more uh, attention. <laughs> I see. Yeah. There's okay. actually there's actually one episode. I don't know if it's Twilight Zone or Outer Limits, but the name of it is I Robot. <laughs> and and so this, familiar. yeah. And this is the 
episode that Will Smith's movie, I Am Led, or uh, I Robot. Yeah. I, I forget what he called it, I Robot. But yeah, that, he, there was a there was a thirty minute episode that that came from. <laughs> good, good. A, a scientist invented a robot. It accidentally killed. Well, he he died in the laboratory, and they accused the robot of being a murderer. I and remember Leonard, we watched this. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah and Leonard funny. Nimoy was the lawyer who had to defend the robot. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting episode. Yeah. Okay, uh, I I have a question, guys. Can we just you know to change the genre for for one for one uh, week and to watch this uh, continuation of John Wick or how it's called with Keanu Reeves? So we did the first part, right? Time for the second one, I guess. John Wick. Yeah, number four. There's four movies out now, but we've only yeah. seen number one, I think. Yeah, I think if we like number two, then we can continue. You know. To be up updated. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's action. It's action. <laughs> okay. Well, I will like it. Okay. Oh, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> see you. See you next week. Bye. 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 John Wick two. Yes, John Wick two for the next week. Bye. Bye. Thank bye, you, Julie. No problem.